Hey guys, in this video we're going to install an Android head unit in the Prius. Now before we start, I want to let you know that Seacane provided me with this unit. I didn't get it completely free, but I did get a nice discount. But with that said, I'm still going to give you an honest review because that's how I do things. Anyway, I'm going to bring you along as I install this unit in my Prius, and then I'll give you guys a review of what I think about it. So naturally, before we install the new radio, we need to remove the old one. This one, as you can see, is not stock. It's an aftermarket unit that I installed about a year or so ago. But the removal process is going to be basically the same. By the way, the Seacane unit is basically going to replace everything from here on down in the center console, or I should say in the center of the dash. That includes the radio, the cubby holes, and even this piece of trim underneath here. So all this stuff needs to come out. By the way, you may have noticed that I have a scan gauge. This has served me well for many years, but I think the Seacane unit will be able to replace that as well. Okay, so to remove the radio, we need to remove these two vent pieces from the dash. Now the one on this side is pretty straightforward. You can open up the glove box and that gives you access behind the trim piece to pry it out. This side is a little bit more complicated. To get this one out, you first have to remove the top and bottom part of the dash here, but in order to get those out, you first have to remove this vent piece. So it's like a domino effect. You have to remove this, then these, then that. Just a word of warning regarding these vent pieces. The plastic is very fragile. I believe you're supposed to remove it by pushing down a little bit on the top to disengage the tabs up there. Then you pull it back to disengage it. And then you pull the entire unit straight out horizontally. Now unfortunately, this one shattered when I went to remove it. I didn't even press on it very hard. But like I said, this plastic is very fragile. So be very careful. Okay, so next we're going to remove this kick panel on the bottom of the dash. It has two screws, one here and one there. Um, I'm going to say they're Phillips, but actually they're probably JIS. Anyway, after you remove those two screws, you pull the whole panel straight back horizontally. There are some plastic clips here and there, and they just pop loose. Okay, next we have to remove the top piece of the dash. Now this one doesn't have any screws or anything, it just has a bunch of plastic clips. Some of them are over here and some of them are over here. And just like all the other plastic pieces, you gotta pull it straight back. Okay, we shouldn't need to completely remove these two dash pieces. We just need to move them out of the way so we can gain access to that vent piece. And here you see what I'm talking about. And just like the other vent pieces, that needs to come straight back. And also be very careful because that plastic is going to be fragile as well. I was able to remove it without breaking it, but I'll be honest, that was pretty nerve-wracking. Anyway, let's take a look at the mounting clips on this guy. You see there's two on the bottom here. Then you've got this one in the middle. Then there's another one in the middle right there. And then you've got the two on the top, those yellow ones. 
And just like the other vent pieces, and actually all the dash trim, this is meant to come straight out. All right, so all we got left is that piece right here. And like I mentioned earlier, you can open the glove box and that will give you some access to get behind it and help pry it out. Okay, this piece is being difficult. So I had to remove the glove box so I can give it the old reach around. Anyway, um, removing the glove box is pretty simple. You just have to pinch it together at the top right up here and it falls right down. And then there's uh, like a shock absorber thingy that connects to the side right down here. It connects right there and you just pop it loose. And then the glove box pulls right out. Wow, I got lucky again. This one didn't break either. Let's take a closer look. So here we can see it has the same type of yellow tabs as the other one. Three on the bottom. I mean, two on the bottom, two in the middle, two on the top. And, you guessed it, it comes straight out of the dash. Just like all the other pieces. Okay, so I only broke one of the vent pieces. This one right here. Like the song goes, two out of three ain't bad. Anyway, you might be wondering what I was using to remove these. Mostly my hands and a lot of patience. But also it might help to use some plastic trim removal tools and maybe a putty knife. You can buy these trim tools on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I'll put a link below. Okay, the vent pieces are out. We're almost ready to remove the radio, but the multifunction display needs to come out first. It has two bolts, one on each side. We have one right about there, and one right about there. They're both 10 millimeter, and can you guess? It pulls straight out. Okay, now we're going to remove the cubby hole piece. It has two screws. There's one on this side and there's one on that side. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or JIS. They'll both work. Okay, here's a closer look at that unit. You can see the two screw holes and it has four plastic clips. And once again, this unit pull, you get the point. Okay, finally we can remove the radio. It has two bolts up on top and two bolts down on the bottom. They're all 10 millimeter. Okay, the radio is out. This has to be the most complicated radio removal I've done. Definitely not for the faint of heart. Anyway, now we can think about installing the new one. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to remove this bolt in the middle, in case you're wondering. Hey guys, I had to refilm this part of the video because of a camera error. At this point, I had already installed the radio, so I had to take it back out. As a result, you're going to see some things that don't happen until later in the video. For example, this and these. Anyway, let's get into this. Okay, so the old radio is out. We're ready to install the new one. But before we do that, let's figure out what all these electrical connections do. Because, let's face it, there is a lot of them. 
Now we do have a user manual, but this user manual tells you how to operate the radio after you install it. It doesn't tell you how to install it. Now we have this pamphlet with the pinouts for the back of the seeking unit. Now that's helpful, however, it does not tell us what all these connectors are for. So we're going to have to figure this stuff out. Also, you'll see the wiring harness is in two pieces. You have this part and of course this part. I'm assuming they connect together, but once again, the instructions don't tell us. So we're going to have to figure this out too. Okay, so let's go through these connections one by one and we'll try to get them all figured out. We're going to start here. Now this has a couple audio inputs connected to it. Specifically it says aux input. I'm assuming these are for like if you have stock navigation or something like that. Now on this piece of the harness it also has two aux inputs and it looks like they connect together. Okay, the next two connections I believe are for backup cameras. Maybe one of them will fit my car because my car has a backup camera. And also on this other connector we have a video input which I'm assuming connects to one of these. So we'll just do this. Okay, this connector goes to the CAN bus decoder. Let's go ahead and plug that in. I think this decodes the signal for the steering wheel controls. Okay, these three connectors are the main connectors for the stereo. Um, they have things like the power, the ground, the ignition, the speaker connectors, etc. This connector is for the antenna. And this will plug into the seeking unit. And last but not least, we have our connector for the steering wheel controls. Now the connections for the seeking unit itself are actually pretty simple. We have this black connector which plugs in right here. We have this white connector which plugs in right here. Of course we have our antenna connector which plugs in right here. We also have a GPS antenna which plugs in right there. And then we have a couple USB connections which plug in here and here. Speaking of USB connectors, the CKN radio does not have any front panel USB connectors, but it does have those two on the back panel. So what I did was I decided to replace the 12 volt power outlet, aka cigarette lighter, with a dual USB outlet. Removing the uh, cigarette lighter is pretty easy. You have these two tabs that you squeeze together and then it comes out. And the dual USB outlet fits in here with no modification. So now I can take these two cables and plug them into those back panel connectors. Okay, also this part of the harness has video and audio outputs. I'm assuming these are if you have an external amplifier or an external monitor, you can connect these up. Also we have an amp turn on wire. And in this part of the harness, there's also an amp turn on wire, which I'm assuming is if you have a factory external amp then I'm guessing you would connect these two together. Also, we have an illumination wire that's not hooked up to anything. This is probably, once again, if you have other electronics that have a screen that you want to dim when you turn on the headlights, you would connect it to that. Okay, now we get to play the game of pin the connector on the harness. Uh, my car came with the basic radio, so it's probably not going to use most of this. Okay, so my car only used three of those connectors. We have the main connector with the power and the ground, and it's got some of the speaker connectors. Then we have some more speaker connectors here. And last but not least, we have the steering wheel controls. Now, one note about this is these other two wires on the end, this white one and this pink one, those are the two wires that you have to connect with a resistor when you install an aftermarket radio. Now, unfortunately, this radio has nothing connected to those two wires, which means we're going to have to install a resistor. Unfortunately, the CKN radio did not come with that resistor. 
So if you want to install this radio, you're going to need a 68 ohm 5 watt resistor. Now the other aftermarket radio that I just removed had that resistor. It came in the kit. So I'm going to reinstall that. Also, here is the backup camera connector for my multifunction display. This connects to the display, not to the radio. Anyway, um, the what appears to be the backup camera connections on the CK radio, unfortunately, neither one of them matches it. So it looks like I will not be able to use my stock backup camera with the CK radio. Like I mentioned earlier, my car came with the bargain basement radio, so it only used the basic connections. These other two here are probably for upgrade radios, like for example the JBL unit. So on my car, these will not be used. Oh, and I almost forgot, since my car has a basic radio, it also has a standard antenna jack. So I don't need to use that antenna adapter either. Okay, so about that resistor, I decided to make a little pigtail connector with that 68 ohm resistor in there. These two connections can go into the back of this electrical connector and that'll take care of these two wires. Just like that. Okay, we're almost ready to install the C-cane unit, but before we do that, we need to attach the trim piece on the bottom to the C-cane unit itself. Now, it has two screw locations here and here, and it connects sort of like that. Unfortunately, I could not find the screws in the package, so I'm going to have to supply those screws myself. All right, we got that trim piece installed. We had to clip these two clips together here and here. And then we had to install two screws, one here and one there. The screws I used are SAE number six wood screws. They're about a half inch long. I'm not sure what that equivalent would be in metric, but you can look it up. Anyway, this should be just about ready to install. Okay, unfortunately, it's starting to get dark. I started this project around 3 p.m. It is now after 8 p.m. and the sun's going down. So I'm probably going to have to resume this tomorrow. But for you guys, it's going to be just a few seconds. Okay, it's the next day, and I think we're almost ready to install this radio. We have our wiring connections hooked up. We have our resistor for the climate control hooked up. We have our USB ports installed. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. The C-King unit does not include these little plastic dealies that have to be installed on the mounting clips. I'm not sure why they don't include them, but we have to transfer these over to the C-King unit. Oops, I almost forgot about the GPS antenna. From what I've read, it's supposed to be installed horizontally, either this way or that way. I'm going to mount this up inside the dash, up inside here behind the multifunction display. And there it is. Okay, now we just need to connect the black connector, the white connector, and the antenna to the CK unit, and it should be ready to install. have noticed in the time-lapse footage I did not use any of those 10 millimeter bolts to install the radio. That's because it only uses the two Phillips or JIS screws to install it and all those plastic clips. Anyway off camera I'm going to tidy up all this wiring back here and then I'm gonna reinstall all the dashboard stuff and then after all that's done we'll come back. 
Okay, everything is reinstalled, and let me tell you, it went back together a lot easier than it came apart. Anyway, I noticed a small issue with the seeking unit. The bezel sticks out just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Now, I double-checked to make sure there weren't any wires getting pinched behind the unit or anything like that, so apparently this is just a manufacturing thing. So I'm not sure if this was intentional or maybe if it's a manufacturing variance. Anyway, I've been waiting to do this. Yeah. All right, let's start up the car and see if this thing works. Well, that's a good sign. Okay, let's see if the climate control works, because it's like 90 degrees outside with 70% humidity. Nice. Oh, that feels good. Unfortunately, I have to turn it back off so you can hear me talk on the camera. Okay, so this is the home screen. Um, on a side note, the screen's pretty shiny, so it's kind of tough for me to get a shot without stuff reflecting in it. Anyway, um, check this out. It has a bunch of apps. Looks like the touch screen could be more responsive. Sometimes it takes a couple taps to get it to do what you want. And check out the audio settings. This is the graphic equalizer. We've got listening positions, the distance to the speaker and all that good stuff. Different channel outputs. Low pass and high pass uh, crossovers. Cool. Cool. Also, the unit has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so for example, you can pair it up to your phone. Also, you can pair it up to a Bluetooth OBD adapter. So for example, you can use this with the Torque app to monitor your car's engine, or you could use the Torque app as like auxiliary gauges on your dash, keep track of your fuel economy, and stuff like that. And of course, it has a radio navigation, and if you pair it up with your phone, you can listen to the phone on your speakers. Also, I'm going to go get a uh, USB thumb drive with some music on it, and I think that's what that's going to be for, so give me a sec. Okay, I've got a USB thumb drive plugged in. I've got the music playing, and it sounds pretty good, although I do want to warn you, when I first installed this unit, the volume was super loud. I mean to the point where the speakers were starting to crackle, so I had to figure out the steering wheel controls really quick before it blew out my speakers. Actually, let me show you how to do that, because that's probably one of the first things you'll need to do. By the way, this is royalty-free music from the YouTube audio library, so we don't have to worry about copyright strikes. Anyway, to adjust the steering wheel controls, we're going to go back to the home screen. We're going to hit Setting. We're going to go to car setting, and then we're going to go to assembly, and it's going to give you this little warning that you basically have to ignore, and we're going to go to steering wheel setting. Now, unfortunately, you have to set these manually, and to start programming the steering wheel buttons, first you have to hit the begin learn button, then you go over to your steering wheel and you push a button. And then you have to tap the appropriate button on the screen. And you just have to go back and forth and do this for each button on the steering wheel. And when you're finished, you hit end learn and it should be done. Oh, and you'll notice that after a, a button is successfully programmed, there'll be a little blue tick mark next to it. 
So I've done all my steering wheel buttons. Now we're gonna push and learn and that should be done. We'll go back to the home screen and let's start pushing some buttons and see what happens. All right. Cool. Oh, and by the way, all this stuff is in the user manual, including how to operate all these apps and stuff. Anyway, it's probably going to take me a while to go through all these apps and get them all figured out. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me go through all that. It may take a few days to, you know, get everything worked out. But before we go, I want to give you my final impressions on this radio. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was provided to me by Seacane. I did not get it completely free, but I did get it at a nice discount. That said, if I were to pay retail price for it, would I buy it? That's the question. Okay, so this radio does have some strong points. First of all, it comes with the steering wheel controls. A lot of other Android radios have the steering wheel controls sold separately, so you have to pay extra for them. And they're not cheap. However, this radio did not include that resistor to make the climate control work properly, and it also was missing those little mounting clips to mount it. But those are pretty minor things, and once again, it comes with the steering wheel controls, which is not cheap. So I would have to say my initial impressions of this head unit are mostly positive. It'll take me a while to actually get to know it and, and give you a final idea of what I think about it. But based on what I know of it right now, I would say that it's worth the money. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you next time. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to buy more than one item on AliExpress. It's a very quick and easy process, so make sure to follow along. All you have to do is go to the AliExpress website or download the AliExpress mobile app. When you arrive at their website or you open up the mobile app, you can browse through all the options, all the categories, and find the items that you want to purchase. After you find the items, what you have to do is, on the item page, make sure you choose the appropriate color or item type for on the page, and if you wish to add a single item, all you have to do is select Add to Cart. You will get this notification telling you that the item has been added to your cart. Now, if you wish to buy more than one item at once, you can just go ahead, open up another item, and also Add to Cart. You can do this as many times as you'd like. Now, if you wish to buy more than one item in the sense of quantity, all you have to do is change this counter right here. Under every single item that you pick, there's going to tell to be this info quantity thing telling you if you get additional discounts and how many items are available and you can simply keep adding more items as necessary. Be aware that the shipping prices might change and all you have to do after you change the quantity of items is select add to cart. Once you are satisfied with everything that you added to your cart, you can go to checkout by selecting view shopping cart and you will be able to review everything. Make sure that the quantity of items is correct, you can alter them if you wish over here on your cart, so go ahead and add more items or remove items from your cart, and then select checkout once you are satisfied to proceed with the payment method. I hope I was able to help you on how to buy more than one item on AliExpress. If this video helped you, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more quick and easy tips. Thank you for watching.